Hello War of the Visions fans, I'm Jackie Fox, and I was going to make this a part of a bigger video, but uh, today I want to talk about how to build Veritas of the Earth now that people are, at least if you're in a higher level guild, you can definitely 140 this character by now. You can probably, I have a couple of reincarnations on him. If you'd like to build resources for this character faster because you're not there yet, you could join either Silkus or Gasol Union. I will say something about that in the comments, I guess. Um, and also, I want to say, if you're here because you're missing RNJ's content, you don't see it in your feed, I'm not guaranteeing that I'm going to step up to do everything that he did. I don't particularly like to just read the news and get into that stuff. Instead, I like to more theory craft about battle, look at data uh, from the JP side. You know, we have a lot of guild battle statistics that I don't see anybody going into. And it really gives us some predictive power on what's going to be good. And this really allows us, you know, it's it's rough since Road to Worldwide only having a one-month window where we used to have a three-month window. So we need to, to use that data as good as we can um, in order to make up for that. And I think that I'm one of the few YouTubers out here doing that. So stick around for the channel for that. I will be also talking about Veritas the Earth in that way. I've already done a video on him, but he was a little bit earlier on. This is going to be more of a 140 Veritas the Earth. So we'll be updating that soon. But I wanted to talk about how you build this guy because I made a couple videos about the Veritas characters recently talking about how strong the Guardian Crystal is. And I'm going to show you how the Guardian Crystal changes this guy's stats because it really is quite amazing. And I do think that these stats are one of the things that would catch them up to newer units. But it's maybe not the only way that you build these guys and I definitely have some thoughts about Veritas of the Earth and what you should equip to him. That being said, I still do... I, I don't know. Uh, let's show you the first build. So the important part of this build, because a lot of these things are going to stay the same, right? I'm using a, an Esper that gives him HP and defense. I'm using two fist-based cards that give him agility, because I want him to be as fast as possible. You really want to speed this guy up. We're also using a TMR that does a lot for agility. I have a lot of thoughts about like what TMR really works well with this guy. Um, Orca Boots is one that I think would be really cool for him. It doesn't give him any base agility, which is really what I want out of a TMR, and a lot of the ones that get base agility aren't things that he needs. Like You can think of the poster child for this being Bells with its 7 agility. Um, he doesn't necessarily need AP regen because he will buff himself during combat, which is something that most offensive characters won't do, and that allows him to build his AP back up. Um, Reminiscent Hairpin from Katone has 8 agility, but it also comes with a buff that gives him hate down, which is counterintuitive for a tank, counter-strategic even. Um, so I went with this because I don't know what else to do. It also provides maybe some interesting uh, resistances. I don't know. This is kind of, this slot for this build is a little bit open, but that's kind of what you want. You want something with a good bit of agility. I think this has six or seven itself, so it's going to make him pretty fast, um, while also giving a, bu a buff that is kind of helpful for him, because again, with the higher agility TMRs, it can be hard to find one that really fits him well, uh, at least on an accessory. And then we have the these two slots. I think these are probably the two best pieces of gear for him. Um, maybe there are other fists that you could make certain arguments for, maybe even using something like the Cat Claws, which is going to reduce his attack power by a lot for this, maybe even HP a bit, um, but would give him more agility. That's especially going to be helpful if you're using something like Orca Boots, because then you aren't worrying about stacking the agility stat between those two slots, between slot one and TMR. Um where you would lose some of the potential agility for the one that has less, um, probably about half, if not more. So, you know, you could be bringing in something that you think gives six agility, but actually it only gives two because you have a TMR with agility. So Orca Boots, which has no agility, would allow you to maximize something like Cat Claws. But it's just not a good piece of equipment. The reason that I really like this, and we'll see this in the build, 
and you have to have it plus one by the way for this so you have to have it fully upgraded which is a big ask for a lot of people if you don't have this if this is too hard for you right now i know it's accessible to everyone all well, the equipment kind of is um but it's not necessarily something that everyone can get especially at plus one that's pretty difficult but if you do that this is pretty much the highest healing power this guy is going to get. I'm going to be showing off two different ways to get him this high in healing power, but looking at what that means here, he's going to have 25 healing power uh, up, which is going to be really helpful for him. He is a character that heals himself back a lot and very powerfully um, because he is probably one of the only characters where they really got the AI right to have a heal that he will use even if he's staring down someone in the face, most units would, instead of healing, instead of buffing, they would just, even if they had nothing better to do, no AP to do anything, they'd still just slap the guy in front of him. Veritas of the Earth, even if he has tons of AP to ruin the guy in front of him in some way, I think maybe he might prioritize a kill over healing. Um, but he will heal himself uh, as long as he's below 50% HP and give himself a number of other buffs, and this usually brings him all the way up to 100% HP, and you can make that a lot more consistent by adding more healing power, and the more healing power you get, it really it really stacks well. It, it's quite powerful, and I think with the way this guy's heal works, the further you get him below 50% health before it triggers, the more extra healing power is going to do. I think if he's like at 49% health, you don't necessarily need extra healing power to get him back up to full health but in cases where he's going down really low you might want this anyways that being said <clears throat> while there's a ton of good stuff on this there's a lot of accuracy here for one which is contributing to a pretty high accuracy for himself there's also reaction block rate which is pretty cool decent amount of strike attack up the physical damage boost is interesting but not super helpful for him because he's not going to be an incredibly offensive character although i will be showing you a build that that has a lot more attack than this actually um but he's probably not going to have this and uh that build we i don't know maybe i could do yeah i can actually think of a fourth build for this guy that would be interesting as well the problem with that build though is, and the, the thing that I think is most important for him as a character, is this piece of armor. This is also a Legendary Reliquary's armor, this is also fully awakened, so this also might be something that not everyone can pull off. This might be the most exclusive build for him in some ways. But I think it's also the most powerful. Here's why the Maximilian is cool. So as long as you have more than 50% HP, you take 10% less damage. It also has an incredibly high amount of HP, which is really good for this guy. Also, pretty big defend. So, just a lot of really good stuff here. Debuff weakening is already a thing that he can do. This boosts that. Critical evasion is I... <laughs> it comes with a lot of it, actually. So, this is a pretty cool piece of armor. But it's even cooler when you consider two things about Veritas of the Earth's kit that just absolutely seem to maximize this armor. This... This dude was built for this armor. This armor was built for this dude. We may not have known it yet because he wasn't released when this armor came out, but this armor was built for him, or he was built for it. Because, first, if you're going up into a physical matchup, he has an HP barrier that gives him 7,500 extra HP before he even starts taking damage. Since you can comfortably get him to about 15,000 HP in situation, this effectively makes his HP 22,500 against physical opponents. And he's going to be taking 10% less physical damage all the way until he gets down to about 7,500 HP. That means that for the majority of his effective HP, he's taking reduced damage. Now, you're not really going to see it because he's technically not taking any damage at all. It's chipping away at that HP barrier, and we don't get a good indication of where that's sitting. It's kind of invisible to us um, on the UI side. But if he's taking less damage, then they're chipping through that barrier even slower. But what happens if he does get down below 50% health? He'll heal himself back up to full and start taking less damage again. 
having the Maximilian on him is just another way that his mantle fortress increases his defensive stats whenever it's used. It already gives him a lot of critical buffs in addition to that healing, but it will also turn this back on for an extra 10% physical and magical damage reduction. So I think this is the best piece of armor for him. It's hard to argue otherwise because of just how incredibly strong that synergy is. Let's also take a look at some of these extra stats. So we're just below 12,000 HP, just uh, below 1,200 attack. 99 agility is maybe the highest that I've gotten for him in these builds. 27 uh, lightning resistance, 57 slash resistance. These are a few things that should be consistent across his builds. Also 35% magic resistance in part because of the main vision card that we have gives us a lot of magic resistance. This isn't something super native to him, but he would have had 15% without that vision card, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's see, strike attack 37%, accuracy 73. This is by far the highest, and this is going to be another uh, benefit that the uh, Dragon's Claws are going to give us. They're very accurate. I also give him um, negligible evasion, really, because he's not an evasive character. But most of that is also coming from the uh, the Dragon's Claws. AP consumption down by 30. Comes in with 5 hate, which is cool for him. Debuff effect weakening of 30% total. Defense penetration of 50%, which is actually... You know what? That's pretty good for uh, for a character like this. Attack resistance, unit attack resistance, 19. Uh, strike penetration, 30. This is kind of superfluous in a lot of ways, but he already has 20 and I built 10 more. Um, a bunch of auto cast on conditions. Reaction block rate, 30 down. Healing power, 25. Reduces physical and magical damage by 10. All element and all attack debuff resistance of 25 which is coming from his TMRs. This is, again, something we're going to... Uh, from his trust runes. And then acquired AP of 20. So I'm not going to go through those stats in detail in the same way for this next build. I'm going to more note what changed. And the first thing that changed is we swapped out the Dragon's Claws, so we're not going to see them anymore. We're trying to keep the armor on this guy. So I used slot 1 for the Guardian's Crystal. As you can see, huge stat boost across the board. This can also help me build agility too, which is good because um, there isn't an agility fist weapon in the TMR slot. Also some elemental chain resistance. So, uh, also I'm going with, this should be pretty easy to get for people. This is uh, La Mega. Yeah, La Mega's uh, fist. TMR. And it comes with a little bit of extra accuracy. It's not quite as accurate as the Dragon's Claws, but because this build is different, I'm just now realizing I didn't show you the, the runes on the other one, um, I was able to put in things like Reaction Block Rate because it's not on my uh, equipment. Uh, there's no Strike Attack on this equipment either, so I was able to put that in here. But I also had to take out all of the like HP up and that kind of stuff because you're getting better from the Guardian's Crystal, which allowed me to put in Wind Resistance on this build, which I didn't have on the previous one. Um, and I also have Healing Power here. So since we aren't getting Healing Power from our weapon, we want it from our TMR. And this is part of why I was saying that 15 isn't that big a deal, because any TMR could have 10 at the cost of one of your slots. And that's fine. So, how does this change the stats? Let's look at these main stats first. Uh, we're close to 14,000 HP. And this is, again, without a party and without other characters contributing to this, other vision cards contributing to this. This should go pretty high. Attack of 1256. I thought that would be higher. So, the attack is only just a bit higher. The Dexterity and Luck are a bit higher, though Agility is just a bit lower. We have less Wind uh, wind Weakness here, but we do have a, still a bit of a weakness to Wind. A bit less accuracy in this build as well, less evasion, but it was pointless to begin with. 
curse resistance I feel is pretty important for him. 25 curse resistance, a little bit less healing power here, a little bit reaction block rate, a little bit less there, but we do have elemental chain resistance, which we didn't have before at all. So some, some big changes here. And then for a final build, I'm looking at the Gaia garb instead of the Guardian's crystal. For one, because look, the Maximilian is really good. I don't want to take that off of this boy. I think that is too synergistic with his kit. So if we give up our extra stats and maintain, uh, and we also have to still give up the Dragon's Claws, although I guess we could trade the armor for them. Um, we have defense penetration here, which is good. Uh, healing power, 15, so we don't need that on our TMR. AoE resistance for self when HP is above 60%, which is pretty easy for him, and increase HP 15%. So this, you wouldn't be able to equip a fist and an armor and maybe the fist isn't super necessary. Maybe you could go with like TMR armor, Guardian's Crystal, Gaia Guard, but the HP up wouldn't stack, which is a little unfortunate. These really aren't made to go together. Uh, uh, so problems. Looking at our stats here though. Our HP is a little higher than the initial build, but lower than Guardian's Crystal. This is the lowest attack of any build we've shown off so far. Um, dexterity is also noticeably lower than the other build. And agility is the lowest we've seen so far as well. We are missing a couple passives. Our defense penetration has gone up to 60 though. Healing power here is 15. We finally have some AoE resistance of 10. But uh, yeah, this isn't really my favorite. And then now that I'm thinking about it. So it's only going to overlap on healing power if you have these maxed. If you aren't running these maxed, then maybe this build makes a lot more sense. It is... Just a little bit weaker in its main stats. Um, it's probably more in line with the other one. There are a few passives missing just because I didn't finish the TMRs exactly. But the helpful thing here is really going to be this. Temper Wait. I don't remember them giving us the details for this. I also didn't think it was that low. Huh. I mean, especially compared to like modern, it's 50%. <laughs> but uh, it does give him a way to restore HP, give his allies a way to restore HP. This could be a build for you, especially if we like... If you don't have the healing power on it, that build might make sense. Although I think you're giving up a lot for a little with this armor. Um, maybe other choices would be stuff like glinting armor, other good TMR armors like that, but there aren't that many of them. And honestly, I still don't see the argument for like how this is better than the Maximilian because again, uh, I like to think I made a really good case earlier in this video for why the Maximilian is the perfect armor for this character. Let's put the Guardian Crystal on this build instead. Yeah. I mean, it, it helps the stats. Dexterity is now above 400, which is good. Attack is now above 1200, which is pretty good. HP is above 1300, not the best that we've seen. But again, that's part of that is he's, mix, he's m missing the bulk of the Maximilian as there really aren't other armors that are that bulky in HP. Um, that and the Guardian's Crystal are an incredible combo for getting his HP up very high. And, you know, especially when you're thinking about the buff on the Orca Boots. He could just get really ridiculous with that setup. But, 
hopefully this has given you some ideas about what you need to build this character, how you would build him to his maximum potential, and kind of what that looks like. If you have other builds that you think are really strong for him that I didn't notice, feel free to leave them in the comments. The Guardian's Crystal is really cool, but Veritas of the Earth has a lot of competition for his first two slots. But also, I guess, a certain amount of competition for that third slot, even though there are certain what I would usually consider staple TMRs that don't make nearly as much sense on him to do the things that I want to do. But again, I think Orca Boots would be really cool if you could work that into his buff rotation because that plus 25% HP on a character like this could be really huge. And just another way to abuse the Maximilian and its ability to reduce physical damage and magical damage while your HP is above a certain percentage because, you know, an extra 25% HP might push him up to like, you know, with his barrier which again isn't really seen within the ui but with his barrier you know we could be talking like twenty five thousand hp essentially uh, against physical units and still not taking uh full physical damage until he reaches eight thousand nine thousand hp which could be pretty great for the maximilian for him so you know a lot of options here. If you appreciate this video, please like, and if you haven't, also subscribe. And if you haven't, since my videos are not always the cleanest, sometimes I level the playing field with some F-bombs, uh, click that bell just so YouTube can't say, nah, this video too naughty, not gonna send it out to your followers. You'll always get the newest updates on War of the Visions from me, my newest concepts and ideas, newest strategies, newest builds, everything like that. But also, let me know what you're thinking about this one in the comments. Um, this is really a fan favorite kind of character to me. He's one of my favorite of the Veritas. I really want to see him do well. And I know that there are a lot of other people out there who get excited by these Veritas units, especially FFBE players who some of which may even be shifting over to this game as ffbe eos's it, like right before halloween so that's coming up pretty soon and maybe there's ffbe players that are going to be coming over to this game and saying hey cool veritas units actually i would like to build those and i hope that this helps you guys out because the new player experience, like onboarding, can take quite a while for this game, and building the Veritas can take quite a while. So I hope that this gives you something to look forward to, because having hopes of, of what you build in the future, as I'm sure you're familiar with from FFB, is a really good way to motivate you to stick around while you build these things. And another thing you can do is click the link in the description it's going to lead you to all corners of the jackie fox media universe my other youtube channel podcast that i also occasionally do in addition to books please buy my books i have one on sale for 15 dollars in hardback right now it even happens while we sleep and there are other books as well in more like fantasy video gamey kind of terms that might be appealing to you as a fan of Final Fantasy but also ways to donate to the channel and uh, maybe even just give me some <laughs> give me a little bit of money to pull in this game <laughs> maybe I could check out more characters if I could pull more of them and I could do that with your support anyway it goes though thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one oh.